coming to the cage is Jeremy Beckley, age 26, standing at 5'9", at 105 pounds, coming out of London Fight Factory. Nickname is Ninja. So I'll tell you what impresses me about this guy. He's got a lot of experience BJJ-wise. I think they have like two or three uh, Ricardo Vieira black belts, very BJJ orientated gym. I've seen this guy, he's an exciting person to watch, uh, but he's very smooth, very silky on the ground with the Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, he's fighting from the London Fight Factory, they got a number of good Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys there. And as you say, he's from Canada originally, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's got some wrestling to go with it. Now, his record currently stands at 4 2 0. Um, but every time I've seen this guy, he's just gotten better with each performance. He's got a good work ethic, and one of his favorite techniques, he says, is a head kick, so he can strike as well as grapple. Now, he is long and lean, so that is definitely a benefit to be able to be a kicker with those long, lean legs. You can reach out and touch somebody. Exactly, yeah. to be coming to the cage in very, very good shape. And he looks very focused as well. He's up for it. JJ Pedigree, uh, led off by Eddie Cohn, who is also, he's a Gracie affiliate, and he got his black belt, I believe, from Hoyce Gracie. It's always good when you've got two local lads fighting, it's going to make you an more exciting fight. Both guys coming to the cage with a look of almost determination, ready to get in there and to do what it takes to walk away with the win here tonight. Well, Costa's Doru is undefeated at 5 and 0. So there's always that extra added pressure of each fight to keep, keep remain undefeated. Now, I've watched Costa's. Costa can, can stand, but he really loves the groundwork. And his money maker has been that lead left hook, change transition, change the level straight into the double leg. So look for that to set up the takedown. Absolutely, but I'm sure Jeremy's expecting that. He would have watched his past videos and he will uh, be ready to counter that double leg attempt. And I'm sure both guys will know their way around the ground on their back or in that top mount, side mount position. Both these guys coming off a win on the last Bama back in February. So they've got the momentum going and they would still be in shape only like three months ago. This fight is anything like the previous fight, Boyston versus Taylor. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your eyes peeled because there's gonna be everything from stand up, take downs to the groundwork. And I'm looking forward to big things from both of these guys just based off, the, again, their past performances. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for our next contest of the evening. Three five minute rounds of fighting in the lightweight division. Your referee for this contest is Mark Woodard. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter with a professional record of four wins, two losses. He stands five feet, nine inches tall and weighted at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeremy Ninja Pantley. His opponent fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a freestyle fighter with a professional record of five wins, no losses. He stands five feet, 10 inches tall and weighed in at 156 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Costas Daru. 
Now, Nick, on paper, both of these guys look very similar physically. And even talking fight style, they're almost carbon copies. Exactly. Now, sometimes that can make for a bit of a stalemate. However, if one of them decides to switch up from their usual game plan, they might have the upper hand by taking the other guy by surprise. Now, just from the fight footage that I've seen, I'd have to put the striking in favor of Jeremy Petley. However, I think they're both uh, around about the same skill level on the ground. I agree. Maybe the wrestling will make the difference, though. Jeremy with a low stance. Maybe he's looking to shoot in. Jeremy is the south four, so Costa should be circling to his left to avoid the power. Now immediately Costa's got that body lock, however, he went for the takedown. Look at this, walk me through this. He's gone for the guillotine, it's an arming guillotine, but he's right against the cage. He's, he looks to be using a lot of energy on that, he's committed to it, and this could go wrong if he doesn't get it. Now you see Costa's trying to get up on both feet, trying to relieve some of that pressure. Now, if Petley will angle off, turn the head in, Will that make it for a tighter guillotine? Exactly. Jeremy wants to be dipping his right elbow towards his right hip, but as I say, the cage is hindering him a bit. I think at this point he realized he's not going to get the sub because Costas is experienced. He knows how to relax in these dangerous positions. So there you go. Jeremy gives it up, and he's already thinking about what to go into next. Now, Jeremy did a very better move in that you always go position before submission. The submission wasn't coming, so therefore he tried to go ahead and look for a dominant or a better position. Yeah, and he's still got an angle here. He might be looking for a Kimura. Costa's got to get his head back in the middle. Now, Costa's is trying to pass the guard. However, Petley is doing very good at keeping him squarely based his hips square on to Costa's. Yeah, but look, he's looking for that Kimura on Costa's right arm. Costa spotted it and he's safe now. Now, Costa's could have been set up for a possible Kimura or possibly even a sweep. Here we go. He's going to unleash the ground and pound now, but Jeremy's doing a good job of controlling his posture, tying him up by the head so he can't get any power shots off. Bring it back against you, Jerry. The legs, right legs creeping up there by Petley, however, Costas passes. However, ends right back in the open guard of Petley. Yeah, you can already tell both these guys know what they're doing on the ground. We're seeing submission attempts, and when they fail, he's still um, regaining his guard. But here we got Costas in half guard looking to pass. Now, what I like about both fighters, both fighters are constantly engaging. Constant, there's no really stale position. They're constantly looking for either better position or looking to set up a submission. You're right. I would say these two are very evenly matched so far on the floor. Now, we talked about this earlier, that both guys are very familiar with the ground. It's almost like a chess match between these fighters. That's exactly what it is, 3D chess match. But you've got the added pressure of the crowd and the fact that if you lose, you've got a lot on the line. Well, once again, body lock there from Costas taking Petley down in another familiar position. Costas in his open guard with Petley back to the mat. Yep, Jeremy's, although he's losing technically, he's not taking much damage. And maybe when he gets finally on top, he'll be able to pull some more damage. Now, both fighters getting instruction from their corners. As Petley's corner, what would you be telling your fighter? I would like Jeremy to uh, control his posture as he is, but drop some little elbows from the bottom because although they're not powerful, they can cut the guy. And you're scoring points off your back, so it looks better for the judges. Now, as Costas engages coming back into the guard, dangerous times because Pelly's always raising the hips up, trying to get a leg over, possibly for a submission attempt like a triangle. At the moment, Costa's doing a good job because he's staying calm and he can spot everything coming. If he were to lose his mind and go a bit too heavy-handed, trying to hurt him too much, then he'll put himself in danger. But at the moment, he's doing a great job of staying composed. Now, Petley, again, hasn't taken any full-on blows. However, if Costas Daru keeps on just by sheer numbers, something's going to slip and something may potentially land. Perhaps, but at the same time, you've got to think Jeremy's losing the fight. And this can happen, I've seen it happen for 15 minutes before. So he's got to make something happen at some point. But you know what I love about this sport? Uh, as with the last match, it was all in favor of Kenshiro. However, at the last second, a role reversal. And it makes for exciting times here in the cage. Absolutely. As I say, I'm looking forward to seeing Jeremy get on top and seeing what he can do with the position. Now, as I tell my guys in the gym, a flat back is a bad back. You need to constantly be swiveling the hips. It opens up positions, and you can also create distance. Exactly, and no, no, no more so than when you're in half guard. It's all about being on your side and trying to look for your underhook on the same side you are. Now, what's the importance of getting that underhook on that same side? 
Well, that creates a nice free path for you to stand up or hit a sweep or many other things. And if you've got your underhook, that means they haven't. When they've got their underhook, they're controlling you. Now, Casas Daru is definitely winning just by sheer volume of shots that he's throwing. However, um, like we said before, Petley is not content to stay and just take the shot. He's opening up the... I would like to see Jeremy take a risk here. Go for a leg lock or something because if he loses position, it's not the end of the world, it's the end of the round. So I'd like to see him take a risk here. Now, I love how you put that. Not the end of the world, but just the end of the round. That's a good mentality you have here in the first round. So, Nick, we're going to get some replay here. I want you to talk me through. Uh, tell me what you would have done a little bit differently in, you know, both guys uh, as they're advancing here on the ground and even on the stand-up. Okay. There's some ground and pound action by Costas, but Jeremy, he looks really calm. Again, he gets his full guard and he's controlling the posture, but he's going to have to take some more risks, make something happen, use the open guard. Perhaps I'd like to see him put feet on the hips and try and kick Costas away whilst he tries to stand up. Because if you're not getting it down on, done on the ground, you need to kick out and possibly try to get back to your feet and see if different shapes attack him from the stand up, see if you can impose your will there. Absolutely. I know from experience there's nothing worse than losing a fight. When you come out undamaged, you've just lost by points because you've been held down too much. No, Costas is definitely winning just from, uh, you know, throwing the shots and also just the ground control. Yeah, he won that round, but they still both look fresh and this round could be a different story. Now let's see if Petley tries to keep, keep it on the feet. I'd like to see some more stand up. Good inside leg kick there by Costas, returned by Petley. It's a bit wild to stand up at the moment. I'd like to see him tidy up a bit, straighten his shots up, and look for that left high kick. Now, when you loop the shots, you're always suspect for your opponent's straight shot down the pipe. Exactly. A to B, the straight shots always beat the curved shots. Jeremy looked for the single leg there, but Costas defended well. You hear the corner yelling knees. Both guys They're are calling for the knees, but the, the, at the battle at the moment is pushing each other against the cage. And if you throw a knee, you on one leg, you're going to lose the battle ultimately of who's against the cage. Possible leg trip there by Costas. However, now he turns around and the knee short shot over the top return by Petley. Jeremy's hands are dropping a bit here. Now, how much did that take out of Jeremy to have to fight off the weight and the dominance uh, topside by Costas Daru? It can mess with you mentally, and when you're mentally worried, that can drain you, your cardio. So it might be a case of that. I mean, how much of an impact exactly is that nervous energy? It's massive, especially the first time you fight in front of a big crowd like this. You know, he's in Wembley Arena. All his friends and family are here. They're both from London, so all these things play a factor. Now, being that they're both from London, both of these guys are looking for bragging rights for sure. Here we go. He got the single leg. Now we've got Jeremy on top. We'll see what he can do with it. Costa's in the half guard. At the moment, he's just tying him up. And again, we talked about being on the hip. Costas is not content to stay flat on the back. Immediately, he goes to that left hip. Exactly. Costa's doing the right thing. He's on his side. That gives him many options. He can either work to get his full guard back or work to pop out the side and hit a sweep. He's got... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm saying Costa's done the right thing there. He's got his right underhook, and that's what he needs. Now, Costas can possibly go oh, back door, go. however, looking for a possible reversal slash sweep there. He looked for a sweep there, but Jeremy showed good balance, good base, and reacted in the right way. There you go. He's landing some short elbows, scoring some points, giving Costas a taste of his own medicine. Now, how does a small cut above the eye just change the whole game? It changes it massively because a lot of people, they see their blood, they start freaking out, they lose their composure, they lose the game plan. It kind of uh, breaks through your armor and makes you feel almost mortal. There we go. Costa's hit a sweep, it's a scramble. Let's see who ends up on top. Costa's done well. Now, I'm really impressed with Costa's Daru here because, again, Petley's coming from London Fight Factory, who are renowned for their ground game, and he's been taking it too, Jeremy oh, Petley. Looking for an armbar. Costa's elbow is out, though, so he's safe. Let's see if he can pass. I wonder if he's going to take his back. That's some proper punches there. Those ones are hurting him. Jeremy's trying to get back to his feet. We might see. Jeremy done the right thing there. 
Now, what was interesting is instead of giving his back, he was looking to try to put his back to the mat, even though that's more susceptible for shots. The reason for that is you don't want to give anybody your back because they'll set the hooks in. Exactly. Costa's working for the double leg, linked his hands nicely. Now, Jeremy putting his hand on the cage, not really grabbing the cage. It's only a warning from the referee if you grab the cage. That's right. Using a lot of energy here, but he's got his back. Jeremy's going to try and turn back into the cage, bringing his left elbow across Costa's body. This is like the second or third time that he's used there that he body clinch to try to work for the takedown. Yeah, Costa likes the body lock. He's comfortable from that position. Here he's going for a leg reap. Petley peels his leg out. Repositions now Costas. Look. Now Costas, now I would have fought more for the takedown versus going back to my back. Well, I think he didn't want to pull guard there. He kind of, Jeremy just exploded in the right moment and forced him to his back. Now, Jeremy really has to take his opportunity. He needs to throw those short shots. Even if he's not landing, he's still showing aggression. And in the judge's eyes, being the aggressor and possibly landing shots. That's right. But I'd really like Jeremy to try and pass here, get a much more dominant position like mount or side control to really show the judges that he can win this round. Otherwise, it's going to be going to the third. Now looking to peel off the half guard there, however, Costas just readjusts, goes back to the modified half. He's trying to control his hand behind his head, but he hasn't got enough time for that. There you go, he needs to posture up and get them big shots off for the last 10 seconds. And he's exploded here in that last 10. How much of an impact do you think it sways the judge if you are the dominant aggressor in the last 10 to 15 seconds? I think it's going to make a big difference, but I would have liked to see him do that a bit earlier. Now, do you think Petley was able to squeeze out the second? It's a close one, I'm glad I'm not a judge, but so far, I'll probably have it a one all. Here we go, Jeremy using the cage to look for that arm bar, but Costa was never in any real danger because his elbow was out. Not only that, his elbow had a bend, and it wasn't secured in tight by Pep. This is where I thought he might try and get his hooks in for the back, but he let it go. And this was at the very end of the round where Jeremy let the shots go, scored some points. Both guys are doing very good things on the ground. Not really been a stand-up war, but again, both guys coming from a very predominant BJJ background, and their schools have top-level BJJ players. That's right, they're both obviously more comfortable on the ground, but as you see them advance through their careers, their striking will pick up, and you see a, more mi a greater mixture of skills on display. Now it all comes down to the third and final round. Both guys have round. to leave it all in the cage. Exactly. A lot of times it comes down to who wants it more, and we're about to find out. Now, I, I definitely think that Costas has imposed his will uh, for the first and the second round. However, Petley seemed to gain momentum during the last half of that second round. Yep, they both got plenty more in the tank. Hopefully, we're going to see something interesting happening. Jeremy's hands are low. Costa's now, looking dangerous. He's hunting out here. He looks like the Predator. Petley's elbows are also flared, bringing the hands down. Where you see Costas has the hands in front of the face, elbows tucked in tight. That's exactly where they should be. I'd like to see, oh, big uppercut just missing the mark. However, followed up with the overhand left. Again, with the single leg, that's what he got him down in round two. Let's see what he can do with it, though. Costa using his underhook. Should be trying to get to his knees here. He has to work. It's the final round. Now, this fight has been a very cerebral, a very thinking man's fight. Each going different positions and the other adjusting. Yep, it's a scramble here. Let's see what happens. On one hand, you've got Jeremy potentially looking for a guillotine. But then again, he's in danger of getting taken down. And he does not want to be on his back. Good job by Costas to finish that takedown. It's the little moments like there that can decide the outcome of the fight. 
And both guys are very slick off their back in the top mountains and stuff like that. Um, but again, I'd like to see a little bit more work rate, a little bit more sense of urgency from Jeremy Petley. Absolutely. He could be on the way to losing a decision if he doesn't do something about it. And again, as you mentioned, how frustrating is that going to be when he gets back to the dressing room? No marks, no damage. However, he lost just off of positioning and sheer volume of tip-tap shots. Body lock again by Costas, who's really strong in that move. And Jeremy refusing to give up his back, who would rather turn and face him. But you're right, it's a massively frustrating kind, kind of fight, but it's better that he experienced it now than later in his career. He's going to learn a lot from this fight. And, and you hear that a lot now. Good little momentum bump there. He went to his back and tried to crawl back up, try to get control of that leg for a possible takedown. He's oh, looking for a sweep, absolutely, but Costas is just that one step ahead of him. He knows what's coming and he's able to control him. And how important is that, just being that one step ahead of your opponent? Massive. As we, as we referred to earlier, it's like a game of chess. There he's trying to attack the neck. Not in danger yet, but it depends which way Jeremy's going to turn. Could be looking for a potential Darce choke here. Now, Darce choke is up underneath the arm with the overhand underneath the neck. That's right, um, but he's safe now. He managed to get his arm out and he's and, recovered full guard. And I think Petley, you know, has a pedigree to identify that that's what he was going for and made the adjustments, getting the hit back in front of Costas Daru. Good job by the ref there to stand it up. Two minutes left of the final round. Let's see what Jeremy can do. Single leg again, hits it. But he cannot wait in half guard. He has to pass the guard. Costa too good with his underhook. He doesn't give it up. Sometimes you just have to posture up and just throw punches with mean intentions just exactly. to see if something might slide through the defense of your opponent. Exactly. But sometimes when you feel the guy on the bottom is as good as he is, you can't afford to posture up because he's gone. <laughs> and that has been the case a couple times here in this bout. Butterfly guard by Costas. Costas gets his legs up underneath. Knee. We need a knee there. That was the time to knee. We're in transitional stages. When he's standing up, that's when you give him the knee. Jeremy working hard for one more takedown. Costa digging his left underhook in deep. Has his legs spread wide. That's exactly what he should be doing. I mean, so far in this bout, Costas has showed what very good takedown there from Petley. Costas has showed why he is undefeated. He's doing well. He needs to work a little bit on his single leg defense takedown. But other than that, seems to know what he's doing on the ground. Now, you said the single leg defense. How would you defend a single leg takedown? Well, it depends how early you spot it. But once they're on the leg, you need to take your leg out to the side, get your wizard in deep, and put pressure on with that wizard. With the wizard, you could even work that into a possible Uchimata where you end up in that top position. Exactly. There's a lot of options. But to be honest, sometimes just defending it is going to be enough. 30 seconds now, Jeremy's got to finish strong. He's got to leave all his energy in the cage. He's got to really leave an impression on the judges to steal the decision here. Now, Casas has to know that he's ahead. He's just going to look to ride out the clock, tie him up. But still, I think every fighter out there would rather win by a stoppage than a decision. So he should be pushing forward and even try a leg lock with 10 seconds to go. This was definitely a fight that was won or lost by millimeters and inches. Exactly. I, I, I kind of predicted this would happen with two ground fighters evenly matched. A lot of the time it's going to go for decision. I think with more experience, these guys are going to improve their striking, uh, work the elbows off the bottom a bit more, and just become a bit more creative, deviate from their game plan a bit more. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, my name is Pierre Guillet, and I've been joined by Nick Oshipshack, and very, very good commentary. And for the fans at home, this was uh, your initial coming out party. First time you did commentating. I've enjoyed it, and uh, what a place to cut your teeth. I've loved it. Here we are, Wembley Arena, sold out crowd of about 6,000, and it's, we've got some better fights coming up later. Now, when it goes to a decision, this is the part you wait that dread, the, oh my God, could it possibly go the other way? Yep. It's not over till we hear the decision. You never know what's going to happen. I've seen plenty of dodgy decisions in my time, and I'm glad I'm not a judge. For saying that, we have a very respected judging uh, crew here tonight, and I think it will go the way that it should go. Both these guys are only going to get better.
Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause for both fighters as they go the distance. Two great fighters. After three rounds, all three judges have come to the decision that the fight will end up in a draw. Interesting. We've got a draw there, Pierre. Well, like you said, I'm glad that I'm not in the judges' seat. Uh, but you know what? Look at the sports we sit here. Both guys are congratulating each other. And at the end of the day, the fans got to see a very technical fight. We have a fight tonight that's gone the distance. It's gone to a draw. Obviously, crowds never like it. When a fight goes to this, let's talk to Costas first. Obviously, you're unbeaten. Do you think you did enough to win that fight? No, I think Jeremy won that fight. You know, I'm not going to stand here and try and claim for that. I think I won the first round and he won the next two. One of the rounds was close, but, you know, I think Jeremy won that fight. And I just I tipped my hat to him, man. He fought great. Well, I must admit that's honest in the extreme. Um, do you think you were too well matched? Because you both seem to have the same strengths, you had the same weaknesses. Well, you know what? He said to me afterwards, uh, it goes to show we're, we're both not jiu-jitsu boys, you know what I mean? first punch in the fight, he caught me with a left hand right under my eye, you know, and it hurt, you know, he, he's got better hands than I thought. Um, his wrestling is nice, you know, he had a nice single leg. I think we are fairly evenly matched, you know. I uh, hope we put on a good show and I uh, hope everyone enjoyed the fight. Again, I'm sorry, I've, you know, I think Jeremy won the fight. I'm not going to lie about that. But I came out and I fought as well as I could, you know, and I just hope I put on a good show for everyone. Well, very magnanimous. Put your hands together. I can't say your winner. The equal winner. They were both first. Costas Daru. And we'll talk to Jeremy now as well. Um, Costas is saying uh, that you won the fight. Do you feel that as well? Well, uh, Co Costas is a gentleman. I mean, uh, I, I thought that maybe in that third round I did enough to nick it. Um, I guess it being a draw, I suppose they scored a 10-8 the first round, which I thought would have been a bit extreme. Um, I thought that maybe I did enough to win it, but I can't take away from Costas. I mean, the dude's a warrior. And it was a great fight. You both seem very equally matched. I mean, I think we, I mean, we're, we're both jiu-jitsu guys at heart, I think. Um, we're, we're MMA fighters at the end of the day. Uh, we're going to come out here and have a war. It's not going to be a grappling match. Uh, we're going to go try to take, take off each other's heads. And, you know, I didn't expect anything less of them. And you did that indeed. And it was great to see. It's also great to see a technical fight as well. So put your hands together for both Costas Daru and Jeremy Petley.